Good morning and welcome to this Zoom service from the sanctuary of the Norwich Congregational Church, United Church of Christ here on the green in Norwich, Vermont. Welcome to all of our Zoom members as well as uh, the folks who are joining us here in person and being very careful coming in and having their temperature taken and sitting safe distance apart. We do ask also that when we get to uh, hymns that you sing with your mask on and when you go you take any uh, wipes or masks and so on with you uh, as you go. But it's wonderful to have you here this morning. Our, the theme of our service this morning is getting to yes by way of no. So we're really going to be uh, exploring the process of trusting God's role in our life and really trusting our source. Let's begin with a few announcements. Next Sunday, August 2nd, is a communion Sunday. And since we're not going to be gathering as a uh, physical body of people in communion, I invite you to if you're at home joining us by Zoom, bring your own bread and wine or juice to your Zoom seat, wherever that might be at home. Uh, or if you are actually coming, bring your own bread and juice or wine again with you for uh, the service. Now, for the next couple of weeks, we got some vacation coming up for, from, uh, for some folks. There's gonna be no upload of the Zoom service. So what that means is we will be having our Zoom service just as we are today. You can join with the invite to the Zoom service, but we're not gonna be uploading it to the website or to CATV for the next couple of weeks. Uh, just so you know, and you're not surprised if you look for it and it's not there. Um, the search committee, the pastoral search committee of the church has completed the profile and the profile has been uh, forwarded to the Vermont Conference office. And so everything we can possibly do in the process up to now has been done. Praise God and thanks to the Pastoral Search Committee because they have done a really amazing, amazing job. And so now what we do, the rest of us, is we pray to support them. And finally, we have a, a special event today. We're going to celebrate the uh, wonderful years that Amy Frost has been the office manager. Was that your official title, Amy, office manager? Office manager here at Norwich Congregational Church. Eight years, if I remember correctly. I wonder if you could come up and join me back here. And I'll try to safe distance a bit here. I want to say uh, just a few words before Chipper Ashley comes up to, to give you a <laughs> gift. Um, yeah, maybe I should put my, uh, I'll, I'll just back up a bit. That's what I'll do. So, I'll keep mine on. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I yeah, it. keep it on. <laughs> we got to follow the rules. All right. You know, uh, uh, Amy, in all my years of, of ministry, I've met many, many office managers uh, in a lot of different situations. Uh, and as a pastor, one of the things that I don't know that everybody really fully understands or acknowledges, but the office manager is the actual hub of communication in the church. And he or she is the one who makes sure that things are clear, timely, they get where they're supposed to go, uh, and that the whole process is seen as smooth as it possibly can be. And this requires <laughs> not only competence, but it requires some wisdom about what's the right thing to do. And uh, in all of my years as a, as a pastor and consultant uh, going around from churches, from church to church, I've never seen a better office manager than Amy Frost. Um, and she has, you know, uh, your wisdom, thoughtfulness, um, ability to know what's yours to do, and what's not yours to do, and to communicate clearly with people so that their gifts can arise is truly amazing. And so I want to say, it feels to me like you have blessed this church in these eight years uh, with a real ministry from your heart. And so I want to begin, just in my short time knowing you and getting to know you, to thank you for helping me transition into being the interim pastor and to get to know you a little bit and seeing how full your life is and the way that you have shared it in this church. So Chipper, would you come forward? Come yeah, why don't you come around there and I'll move a little bit. Um, 
The good news is I'm not the only person giving you a gift. Joan Warner will be here um, right after me. Um, I think what, there's an expression, what do you give someone that has everything? The expression this morning is, what do you give someone that does everything? <laughs> when Amy came to us, um, the office manager's position wasn't nearly as broad as it is now. During the time here, she stepped up the handle of financial half of things, which as we all know is really important. And she did a wonderful job with the communication part of the, the effort. The hub, I think, is a really um, accurate description of what you do. So we wanted to give you something that would nourish both yourself and your family and get you a chance to get you something to remember us by. And we've been told that you had um, some affinity for Simon Pierce. So this is from all of us to you. And thank you, and I would thank hug you, you, but I won't. And now Joan has, thank you. Joan's gift is actually, Joan has a gift that I don't have. It was easy just to collect money and buy a card. Joan's doing, did the real hard work. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. It's, hard to, it's hard to find the words, but I have tried, and lots of other people have tried too. And here's what we think of you as you leave. <laughs> we're sorry we didn't get to have, have a good farewell <laughs> party for you. But that's oh, thank you. Thank you for everything. Wonderful. Well, I have to unmask for just a second because you can't see how much I'm smiling underneath of this. <laughs> Thank you all so much. It was my pleasure to be here for eight years and work with all of you. I mean, really, I feel like you gave me the gift because I was looking for something just like this. Um, and I found it and I was so happy here to meet all of you all these years and work with all of you. And it, it's, it was hard to leave. It was the right time for me. but. I, I'm really grateful for all of this and all your words. So thank you so much, all of you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Amy. I guess I'm a mask back up, but I had to show my smile. Thank you. What is it? <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, I could thank tell you, Priscilla. It was a little bit of an album. Oh, that's beautiful. And I'm hoping it's, yes. This is more than I could have hoped for, a little scrapbook. And that's just, that is exactly what I'm going to go home and pour over and just read uh -huh. all your work. Thank you so much. This is beautiful. Thank you, Joan. This is a, yeah, like a real a labor, so thank, thank you. Thank you, Joan. And everybody who contributed everyone. to it. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. And now, Bob Miller, will you please come forward and lead us in the unison call to worship. Please join me in the unison call to worship. Holy One, you call us to find your kingdom already hidden in our world, in tiny transforming moments, in the call to just action, in surrender to a wisdom greater than ourselves, in hard choices and hard times when it seems we choose among the least worst options, in actions taken out from love though we may be afraid. Open our eyes now to what has always been there, your love, your heart, your inspiration, your path, your yes to us. This we pray as we worship in Jesus' name. Amen.
you will hear in today's reading from 1 Kings chapter 3, God invites Solomon, newly anointed as the king of Israel, to ask for any gift. Solomon is quiet for a moment, then he asks for an understanding mind, a wise and discerning mind, to know good from evil and to lead God's people in wisdom. So, right at the beginning of the service here, let's take a moment in silence to consider our own choice. What would we ask for from our source? What, we, what might we ask for in our lives today? Can, can we ask for a wise and discerning heart willing to allow God to show us the path of yes? Let's take a moment in silence simply to be with the question. Dear God, we open ourselves to you and find you already in our hearts. Through scripture, song, and prayer, help us to see the yes you would have us saw. Amen. The reading today is from the first book of Kings, chapter 3 verses five through 12. Listen for the word of God. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God asked, God said, ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness and righteousness and an uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in and your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have asked not for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. Here ends the reading. We commonly see the words yes and no as polar opposites. You have your yeses and you have your noes. Some of you may remember that in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Jesus tells us not to waffle, but to yes to yes, if you know, we know anything else is from the evil one. And his command makes sense when we turn to him and get clear about what is Gives us yours to do and what is mine to do, then the yes and the no begin to make sense because within that, with that clarity in hand, we really understand what our yeses and no's look like. But of course, in actual experience, yes and no seem intimately connected. I don't know if any of you ever saw the movie called Yes Man with Jim Carrey. Do you ever, do you ever see that movie? 
Um, it's a goofball romantic uh, comedy uh, where the character played by uh, Jim Carrey retreats from the world in a blue funk over a uh, broken relationship. And so he has just one word for all potential risks, uh, connections, circumstances, commitments, happy thoughts or adventures. No, 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 and no. Much against his will, he uh, goes to a glitzy seminar uh, where he is told what he needs to do is say yes to absolutely everything. Not to say no, but to say yes to absolutely anything for six months. So he begins to say yes to everything. He says yes to skydiving, yes to guitar lessons, yes to helping out the homeless, yes to saving a suicidal jumper, yes to organizing a bridal shower for his ex fiance yes to studying the Korean language, and in his job as a bank officer, saying yes to every oddball uh, loan application that comes across his desk. Now, you know, this is a movie, so you get to have it um, how you want in a movie, and against all expectation and every ounce of common sense, his yes begins to turn his life upside down, all for the better, until, 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 he comes up against a relationship with a woman that he really wants to say yes to, but he is deeply afraid. And so the barrier to a full-on yes, yes to his own goofy humanity, to love, to risk, to commitment, is his own fear. And in the end, it takes a no to fear, to say yes to love. It's a romantic comedy with a happy ending and hardly uh, what we tend to call real life. <clears throat> but if you step back for a moment, there's a message here <clears throat> for all of us this morning, a message from the Spirit saying to us, pay attention, folks. Sometimes the most powerful way to say yes is to learn to say no, especially to fear. Have you ever decided to say no to people-pleasing. <laughs> no to doing something you really didn't think was a yes for you, even though it might disappoint others. Did you ever find yourself sick of avoiding conflict? You find yourself starting to say no to going along for the sake of peace. If you've ever said a strong no to your own fear, then you have begun to shake loose your yes and bring it into the world. Such a great example we have of saying no to fear. I don't know if you've seen in the news the images, the pictures of the uh, wall of moms on the streets in Portland, Oregon. It's amazing. I don't know if you've read about it, seen the pictures. It's such a visual. Oh my goodness. Unidentified military in full tactical gear and weaponry faced with moms in bike helmets, masks, and leaf blowers. <laughs> leaf blowers to blow the tear gas back. When you're a mom, an organizer said, you have this primal urge to protect kids, and not just your kids, all kids. And she said the moment she stepped up was the moment she saw the video of George Floyd in Minneapolis dying under the knees of an officer calling his last words, calling for his mother. So she said yes to stepping out, even though she was terrified, had no idea what to do, doubted hugely whether anyone would join her, and even though her daughter begged her not to do this, which caused a conversation between mom and daughter in which she said to her daughter, we talked about that, sometimes you have to be brave and do the right thing even when it feels scary. A teachable moment. <laughs> a wall of 200 moms in bike helmets and carrying leaf blowers up against a military surge. People pleasing? I don't think so. Mm -mm. Avoiding conflict? Hardly. Saying no to powerlessness? You better believe it. Yeah. So here's the thing. 
the work of love, the work of God, the work of real power upends all of our inner preferences, and we all have them, the wish that we could kind of fly under the radar, fly low where our safe and safety and security, we think, lie, where we think, because we think we know what power looks like and we're not it. Staying safe, though, actually says no to a whole world of transformation, courage, and utter astonishment at what God can do in our lives. So why do we say no when we would like to say yes? And the basic reason is that we don't trust our source. Maybe we're trusting fear more than love. Maybe we're trusting ideas of our own making rather than living a life that is fully trusting of where we actually come from. But what happens is we make God to be some kind of security system rather than a launch pad. By contrast, what a beautiful thing Solomon does in the scripture text this morning, asking for an understanding mind. He has a God in his life whom he absolutely trusts. He actually trusts. He's the king, Solomon. He's the king. But he doesn't imagine he knows what's best. He doesn't imagine he knows how it's all going to turn out. Now, a wise and discerning mind, that's Bible language. What it comes down to is this. Help me see, Holy One, what your yes and your no are, that I may listen and follow, for I do know one thing, one thing before all, that you, O oh God, have my best interests in mind. So may your yes be my yes, your no be my no, your life be my life. So it's the spirit of asking and readiness I'm arguing for today. Do you remember the spiritual wade in the water? Wonderful old spiritual. It's a song based on the gospel memory of the healing waters in a pool called Bethesda on the temple grounds in Jerusalem. And the tradition was that you had to stay right by the water had to be right, uh, ready to jump in, watching for God to stir up the healing waters. You know, wait in the water, wait in the water, children, wait in the water, God's gonna trouble the water. Look over yonder, God's gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water. I know, I know, I can't sing, but I gotta say yes. I gotta say yes. I can't say no, even though. But the point is, we all have to climb in. Even though it doesn't feel perfect. Wait in the water. Say no to the I think I know mind. And let God stir up the plan that he has in mind. Ask like Solomon did. Ask like it. It matters more than anything else in the world. And then be ready for God's going to shake loose your yes and bring it into the world. And to that, I say, Amen. invite you to just a moment of quiet to kind of absorb where your yes is, where your no is. And just to ask God one more time, may my yes be yours and my no be yours. Let us turn now to prayers of the people which are adapted from the 138th Psalm and 
towards the latter part, um, we will have an opportunity to name some people um, since this service is going to be uploaded uh, to the uh, web. Um, we will just use first names, but anybody you wish to pray for, please feel free when we come to that point. <clears throat> and if you will join me responsibly. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. Oh God, hear our gratitude. We are no longer ruled by fear. Though I walk in the midst of troubled times, you stretch out your hand and deliver me. Oh God, hear our trust. Your steadfast love endures forever. Hear us, O Lord, as we pray for all whom we include in this service and circle of joy and concern. And I have been asked to include Deb, who has had a social, uh, shoulder replacement, and also to include Kenneth in our prayers. If anyone wishes to add to those prayers. Prayers for Susan. Prayers for this congregation that we may emerge from this time. Prayers Who knows for how, but alive. Alive, even though we don't know how may this congregation emerge from this time. Did I hear you correctly? Can't mask that. Indeed, thank you. So let's conclude the prayer together. Oh God, hear our prayer. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Amen. And will you please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And Kathy, would you lead us in our closing hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
As we come now to the close of this service, let us be reminded of God's steadfast love and commitment and trust in us. So as we go, let us go with a yes in our hearts, knowing that at times it'll take a no. But God has already said yes to each one of us. Would you join me in the responsive benediction? Let us now go in peace, deep willingness to allow Christ to be our yes, our life and our joy. Amen. This is Peter Heinrichs, interim minister at the Norwich Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, here in Norwich. And I hope that you will all be safe and well. Have a great week. See you next Sunday.